Hello, funny people in my computer screen. I just wanted to start by apologizing for this channel's months-long hiatus. Everything is fine uh, right now for the most part. I'm just so happy to be working on videos again. And what better time for this channel to rise back from the dead than during the spookiest season of all, Mike Matei's birthday month. Or whenever you end up watching the video, I don't know. Today, we're talking Ghostbusters. No, not Ghostbusters, the original 1984 classic movie starring this creepy gargoyle thing. We're talking about the 2018 cult classic avant-garde masterpiece album, Super Ghostbusters, by... by Joel. Varg Skelethor Joel. Some of you might be aware of Vine Sauce. They're a group of variety gaming streamers over on Twitch. The most popular and well-known of them all are Vinny Vine Sauce and Varg Skelethor Joel. Both of them are streamers and entertainers that are more so focused on creating fun content rather than actually being any good at video games. Get off my rock. <laughs> I've particularly loved Vinny's streams for a long time. He has a relaxed vibe for the majority of the time that I really enjoy. Vinny, the funny New York Italian pizza pasta streamer man, has some banger music of his own. Check out Redvox, they're great. But the focus of today's video is on Joel. Joel is a wacky streamer man who hails from the faraway land of Sweden. He's pretty well known for his streams featuring some truly bizarre and insane moments. Like that time recently where he screamed about Garten of Ban Ban at unsuspecting people outside his window. There's someone outside the window. Okay, fine, fine. I'll do it. Bon bon! Admittedly, I don't catch his videos or streams as often as I do Vinny's. But that's not to put down his ability to make me laugh. I think they're both equally funny fellows. You know they're both great when they've both been featured in Bluey. It's more that in my adult life right now, I only really have the time to invest into one streamer. All that, and I probably could have just told you he's the man behind Grand Dia, then you'd probably know who he is. But what happens when a very silly Swedish streamer man's internet goes out for a week and going outside just isn't a viable option? You get Super Ghostbusters. Great value brand, Super Paper Mario, Super Original. Starved of any outside communication via the internet, Joel made this album in the span of just a week, and when he returned, dropped it on his unsuspecting audience. What they were subjected to were the insane ramblings of a madman over the same Ghostbusters theme song MIDI over and over again for a grand total of 24 tracks. Before I call this thing a masterpiece, and yeah, I'm somewhat exaggerating, but I really do think that this thing is brilliant in its own special way. Not only is it very funny, but I genuinely think there's some bizarre but genuine musical value to be found in this thing. This album's been out for nearly five years now, and people still find it so entertaining and quotable to this very day. I see lots of people memeing it, but I don't see many people talking about why this album is genuinely well done, so let's take a look track by track just to see what exactly Joel was cooking with this one. Track 1, simply titled, Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters, they're back in town. So what do you do when you can't access the internet for any new sounds to create with, let alone any outside inspiration, and you already have a stanky Ghostbusters theme song MIDI downloaded to your computer for some inexplicable reason? Do you make a funny cover of the Ghostbusters theme song, or maybe just work on some metal tracks? Joel is in a metal band after all. How much can you really do with a single Ghostbusters theme song MIDI? Well, uh... You need to pee! That is so crazy! What the fuck? You need to pee! You call the Ghostbusters, they extract it! There was ghosts in your bladder! What the fuck? Yeah! Kind of the former, but Joel comes up with his own ridiculous new lyrics. Most of the tracks on this album are very funny and never cease to make me laugh even after multiple listens. The concept of ghost pee <laughs> is somewhat funny, but that alone wouldn't really do that much, though, beyond just being your average potty humor. What makes some of these tracks so hilarious and next level is how Joel will 
will take a simple concept like that and give it a genuinely really funny twist. How about the concept of the ghost pee being in your bladder and you have to call the Ghostbusters to remove your piss manually? That makes it at least 12 times funnier. Track 2, Ghostbuster, with a space for some reason. <laughs> I break your door in, I sneak in the basement, it is my home now, but you never find out, cause I am sneaky, I am the rat man, I go up at night, and eat your cheese, ah! In this track, Joel speeds up the midi and tells us the sad story of how the rat man murders the Ghostbusters. The absolutely bonkers stories that Joel comes up with in this album are very entertaining. And the different ways that the Ghostbusters are brought into each situation through ridiculous means is just incredible. All this while most of the tracks don't even crack a minute in length. But one day you find out there is a red man inside the basement and you call the cops, but the cops don't take it seriously, so you call the Ghostbusters instead! Ghostbusters. Musicians can use bits of prolonged silence, whether it be for the entire audio track, only the instrumental track, or the voice track. They use this shockingly simple tactic to create amazing atmospheric effects. Whether Joel did this purposefully or accidentally, somehow he cracked the code by screaming something absolutely insane and then letting the stank midi play before continuing his vocals. Grandma has died! When Grandma has died! You get really pissed cause she owe you money. Only this time the intended effect is for comedy, of course. I think it's okay that grandma died for this. When you fall f Ghost Boster. Aside from a few bits and some wacky sound effects, you'll quickly discover by this point that 95% of this album is the same MIDI altered in lots of wacky and very creative ways. <laughs> Hey, Ghostbuster man, McDonald's have a ghost in the burger. What the fuck? Ow! This time we have a slowed down Ghostbusters MIDI, which gives us an even funkier vibe than before. Not only does Joel put a surprising amount of effort into his shit posty vocals, but I just gotta be honest, his Swedish accent does add a lot to the comedy, especially with how much he exaggerates it on clearly on purpose. That and the silly way he words things. The way he tells the Ghostbuster to get down to McDonald's and use the gun. The burger has a ghost. It's just so funny. This track also made me refer to McDonald's and KFC as McDonkeys and Kentucky Fried Man for months after I first heard it, so the influence was truly inescapable. Gast bistin! <laughs> De lasagna! De lasagna! Was eaten by a ghost! Personally, this is the first song that really made me question whether or not Joel was using the same MIDI throughout the entire album. The way he fucks this poor MIDI in every possible direction makes it sound so different and weird. I just freaking love it. This truly is Leitmotif, the album, Ghostbusters edition. Professional Rate Your Music Credit XXXXXXH thinks this album has zero musical value? They're wrong. It has great value. Ghostbusters. I call the pizza place and I tell them you have a pizza face. I absolutely love the wacky voices he does for ghosts and other characters that appear throughout the album. It's just so fun. Ghostbusters. The MIDI gets really wacky here. I don't have a lot to say about this one, but I love the way he says Call the Ghostbuster! Ghostbuster! One time, I was on the internet And I bought an illegal drug from ebay.gov And it turns out that the drug was a ghost So I put him in the crack pipe and I smoke 
Joel may not even really be singing on this album, but somehow he still manages to match the MIDI in such a good way, no matter how it's being presented. I'll be real, I don't know if it's just that I'm insane for genuinely finding some of these tracks catchy as well as funny, but I genuinely vibe to some of these tracks. He's rambling nonsense, yes, but it's like rhythmically pleasing nonsense. It may be shitposting at the brink of insanity, but it's quality shitpost. Ghostbuster. I was once hungry, so I go down to the local spaghetti shop. Did you know that this album has a bold on Rate Your Music? That means this album is within the top 6,000 highest rated albums on the entire website. Wow! Ghostbuster! The beginning of this song is genuinely the funniest bit in music history. The Ghostbusters MIDI starts up for the 10th time. After a few seconds, Joel proclaims, I shit my pants! But what makes it so funny is the following approximately 30 seconds of near vocal silence accompanied by a hilarious wobbly sound and the stankiest MIDI horns you'll ever hear in your life. Ghosting bust. In this banger track, Joel presents himself as the one and only Ray Parker Jr., the man behind the original Ghostbusters theme song. And this is the first time that Joel actually does a real interpolation of the original track. Again, maybe it's just the influence of my fucked up gremlin brain, but I absolutely adore the fucked up instrumentals. They're both hilarious and really do make this such a fun listen. If there's something strange in your neighborhood, neighborhood. Who you gonna call? Who you gonna call? Ghost It's a ghost. If there is something weird and it don't look good. Also shouting Ghostbuster as a verb, just great. Ghost Batista. This is our first track that has absolutely nothing to do with Ghostbusters. The bit at the end with Joel's skeleton ripping out of his body sounds shockingly good. I really love the sound effects he uses throughout the project. Oh no, the skeleton's coming out! Ah! I live! Gisto besto! In this track, Joel introduces us to the concept of the ghost nut. A cacophony of discordant MIDI instruments build up more and more as we reach the climax of the ghost nutting. Joel's use of the MIDI horns to enhance the comedy really is just one of my favorite things about this album. A single toot from those horns can send me into a laughing fit. Gassed Bastards. Now this is one of my absolute favorite songs on the entire album. Not only does it have one of the most creative uses of the Ghostbusters MIDI, placing a stanky horn rendition of the theme over a great fake MIDI choir, but it has one of the funniest concepts on the entire record. I go like Ghostbusters on the telephone. They tell me, what is it now? I tell them that my toilet is clogged. The very idea of a guy repeatedly calling the fucking Ghostbusters over mundane things like unclogging the toilet is absolutely hilarious. I think this one's even funnier to me because as ridiculous as the concept is, I could kind of see a real Ghostbusters movie or commercial, something like that, making this exact joke. Maybe in the end they wouldn't respond by beating the caller to death, but you know, whatever, move on, next track. Guest best. I'm happy to say that Grandma comes back to life after the previous track, and all I can say is that this is a fun one too. We stand Ghost Johnson. Damn. Life hasn't been the same since Grandma passed away last year. There's only one way to bring her back. Do it. No matter what. What's this Annabeth? 
resurrection? Hello. Hello? My name is Ghost Johnson. Oh, how are you? I play drums so good oh? that I bring back the dead. Really? Ghost t busters with two T's because why not, I guess. <laughs> I poisoned the water supply. Now everyone dead. Whoops. Seriously, those fucking horns make these bits ten times funnier. Ghost the best, like Brain Blast. Joel fools the listener by tricking them into a sense of comfort, believing that this will be just another bog standard cover of the original Ghostbusters theme song, when it is in fact not. Ghost Boosters. I love Joel's wailing throughout this track and the slower, deeper sounding instrumental. I really hope they use this for the official Ghostbusters 6 intro. Who the fuck are you gonna call? The Ghost Buster Buster. In fear of Metallica putting a hit on me and killing me in my sleep, I can't comment on this track. So instead, please enjoy the Cleveland Show theme song as sung by my 95-year-old grandfather. My name is Cleveland, bro. Gist the bisters! Joel finally tells us what really happened to the classic Ghostbusters cast after the events of the original films. More stinky horns means it's Renny approved. They are no longer busting ghosts. They are now doing porno. Goes to bus, thurs. This track is about as shit posty as it gets, even by this album standards. You can tell that poor Joel's running out of steam, but it's less than a minute long, so. And the stop the sledge. Ghost to Boston. Here we have the album's single track that doesn't involve that beloved Ghostbusters MIDI. Joel knows how to thrash, and he provides us with a legitimately badass death metal cover of Ghostbusters out of nowhere. Sure, I know my brain is faulty, so I may enjoy how a lot of this album sounds unironically, but I think this track sounds legitimately great on any standard while still staying wacky and fun. It doesn't feel out of place, weirdly enough. This track alone makes me hope and pray that Joel will take a crack at making an avant-garde comedy metal album someday with fully original material. I think that that would be absolutely fucking amazing. Ghost Boster. You smell of poo poo pee pee. Truly a comedic genius of our time. Ghost Baloney. And with that, now that Joel's completely run out of ideas and his Fisher Price keyboard has krilled itself, so is the end of the timeless epic that is Super Ghostbusters. Because of this album's continued popularity amongst fans, Joel actually released a deluxe edition with brand new tracks uh, earlier this year. I won't be talking about those tracks today, but they are a fun time. Though they don't quite reach the same level of comedy and replayability as the original 24 tracks do. That's no slight against those tracks, they're still good, but Super Ghostbusters was really lightning in a bottle. It really was a spontaneous spark of mad genius that only could have been accomplished with an insane Swedish man and nothing better to do. It's really just remarkable how genuinely entertaining and long-lasting this album is. I've listened to it many times, and I never get tired of it. Sometimes art can only come from a specific person and a very specific place and time, no matter how fucking weird it is. And the album certainly doesn't overstay its welcome at only 21 minutes. I think it's commendable that Joel was able to think of so many clever jokes and entertaining ways to utilize a single solitary MIDI for 24 tracks. Super Ghostbusters is consistently hilarious and an absolutely wild ride in avant-garde comedy music insanity. 
If you've never heard this thing in full, please check out the original link in the description. It's absolutely worth checking out. You might enjoy it even if you don't know anything about Joel. Just know I skipped some specific bits on this album because it's something that you absolutely need to experience yourself. I really hope that you enjoyed that look at Super Ghost Bust. Also, you can expect some more frequent content from me going forward, so be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss anything. Anyway, my favorite tracks are Ghostbusters, Ghostbuster, Ghostbusters, Ghostbuster, Ghostbuster, Ghosting Bust, Gisto Besto, Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters, and Ghost Boston. 9 out of 10. <laughs>